So uh, the objective of today's class is to um, learn about the login page as well as the end-to-end -end connectivity with respect to the entire application. So this is what we are going to learn. In uh, yesterday's practice session also, we had gone through with uh, Postman as well as the Node.js, how to make a connectivity between the Postman as well as the Node.js. And uh, in yesterday's class, you had learned about course also. Um, the main purpose of the course is like it is nothing but cross origin resource sharing. Cross origin resource sharing. So Postman is nothing but an API, which is a trusted API. So that's why without the course origin course itself, you could be able to make a connectivity between your API as well as your Node.js code. But when you are going to create your own API, you need to give the input to the um, system that this API is a trusted one. Meaning of that is from this local host with the port number, if it is coming, trust it and give a permission to proceed further. So for that purpose, only course is required. So in yesterday's class, we had gone through with Node.js, right? So in uh, Node.js, like what we had gone through with respect to that is like, once again, I'm repeating, uh, we have to create a TS server folder. Then we need to create a SRC folder then API folder, config folder, controller, model. So these folders you have to create it and you need to create a file known as index.ts file. In this index.ts file only, the major things which you need to have it is with respect to the express and from the postman, you are going to pass the value. So in order to get those values, you need to have a body parser. Then for proceeding from the index.ts to the API, we need to do mount routes. So for this purpose, you have required dot slash API API. Then you need to use that express. So for that purpose, assigning the express to the app. Then you are going to use it for the body parser URL encoded also. Then this part right now, we are not going to focus it because I'm just going ahead with the postman right now. Then I will proceed with the course also. Then app dot get there we have just if it is slash alone, then I need to have some sort of input messages. So for that purpose, we have kept this code. Then this is the most important part where we are going to mount the routes. Then listen. This is the part where it is going to listen to the respective port number. So how it goes? First, initially, it is going to starting with the index.ts file. Because of mounting, it is moving on to the api.ts file. When it is moved on to the api.ts file because of module.exports router we have given. So common.checkdb, it is proceeding to the checkdb. This common CMN is nothing but which is under the folder known as controllers. Inside that we are having initialized controller ts file. So it is moving to the initialized controller. In the initialized controller ts file, we are having a function known as check db. So what we are proceeding with this check db. So once again, we are going to have check db functionality, which is available in initialize.ts file. In this location, simple query, we are going to write it down. Check, select now. So once the db is being connected clearly, you could able to see it over here. <clears throat> See, once this is over, you could able to see here node map, restarting due to changes and starting node dist all those things. non model one node server listening on port 664. This is came to output with respect to the index.ts file. Then how this DB connected true is coming and how this table is coming is with respect to the place over here in the controller. So once check DB functionality is over, it is moving back to the initialized controller. So in initialized controller, what we have done, if the result is going to be success, then keep the DB connected, set DB connected to true. So initially if they had set DB connected equal to false. Now it is becoming DB connected equal to true. So once it is being set, that value is going to be displayed in the console.log. 
So due to this line only, you could able to see the output as DB connected true because we are having a perfect query over there. So the result is going to be success. So it is setting it to true. So we are having DB connected true. Then console.table where I'm going to display result.rows. So what is going to be in rows where I'm going to have a current date or else now. Now is nothing but it is going to give me a date and the timestamp. So that is going to be displayed over here. So this is what we had learned right in the past uh, two, three class also I had said the same thing. So this is what we had learned how to make a connectivity. So how the connection has been established when it moved on to the initialize.ts file, it is moving to the PSQL APM. Okay. So I need to go to the PSQL APM.ts file. Here, many times sir had also explained in the class, at this location only, we are going to require the config.constant file. So in the constant file, we have kept all those things. We have kept the uh, username, password, then we have kept the host details. We had kept port number also. These are the four important points is required in order to make a connectivity. As I have used the uh, Postgres SQL, so I need to make a connectivity with respect to the Postgres. So for that, what I need to know, I need to know the username of this uh, hyper automation or whatever it may be, uh, username. Then I need to know the password. If it is going to be localhost, you need to mention it as localhost. If it is going to be a server, then you need to mention the IP address of that server. Then you need to give the port number also. So generally for the Postgres, it is 5432 only. So this is the thing you need to make a setup for all those things. So once this, once this setup is over, then you can able to have n number of methods. Like whatever the methods you wanted to have it, you can able to have it all together. Like you can able to make all crude operations over there. Crude is nothing but create, read, update, and delete. What do you mean by crude operation? Hope, uh, hope you guys are following me. Are you guys are following me? The strength is very less. Just to convey your friends to come and attend the lecture. Are you guys are able to follow me? Okay. Mm, if you have any sort of doubt, you can ask me and don't hesitate. See, like you can able to consider the right now, the strength is very less. If you are going to share your screen and ask me a doubt also, I can able to do it. Fine. So this is what you need to uh, understand with respect to the connectivity part. So once this connectivity part is over, okay, the next is like with respect to how I can able to um, get the output, whatever there in my DB, instead of having it in this console.log, why can't I able to have some sort of API and I could able to get the output over there. So for that purpose only, before creating a, your own API, existing list, many API are similar to Postman are available in order to have a connectivity with respect to the Node.js. We are learning with the Postman, even look, uh, URL, whatever it is there in the Chrome URL, there itself you could able to get it. See, at this location also you could able to see question mark key equal to uh, and CID equal to, this is nothing but a query only. This is nothing but a query only. So if you know each and everything, how to write a query in URL, which is understandable by the browser, you could able to do it in the URL itself. Okay. In this place itself, you could able to do it. But for the simplicity as well as for the uh, user-friendly nature, we are proceeding with the Postman. So now in Postman, you could able to see, as I said main, uh, clearly, uh, in the practice session of yesterday's class, you could able to see in index.ts. See how I have mounted the routes. I have mentioned here slash API. This is nothing but <coughs> just giving a 
um, one sort of like already I had given a slash over here. So just for mentioning, this is something different from slash. So for that purpose, I'm going to give here slash API. You can able to give slash X, slash Y, slash Priya, whatever it you need, you can able to give it clearly over here. And after this, it is moving on to the mount roots. So mount roots means what already we had required under the API folder, we are having API.ts file. So utilize it. So it is moving on to the API folder, API.ts file. It is coming to that part. Now, when it is coming to this part, now what is my requirement over here? Under the API, move on to a method known as view hall details. So it is coming to this location. It is coming to this location, view hall details. Now, in this view hall details, what it is going to do once again, it is moving on to the controller. It is moving on to the controller because CMN is nothing but it is mentioning the controller details. So it is moving on to the controller and it is coming to this place. So when it is coming to this place, it is further proceeding to the init class. What is the init class? Object of a class known as initialize. Object of a class known as initialize. So it is further. What is in it class here also you could be able to see initialize is nothing but which is under the model folder I'm having a initialize.ts file. So it is coming to the initialize.ts file and it is checking for get hall details. So what I have mentioned, a query I have written it over here. Let query text equal to select block room row capacity column capacity from hall details because of Connectivity has been taken place in the constant. See, with the help of PSQL APM, I made a connectivity from the Node.js to the Postgres. So due to that, I could able to write a query over here also. So what is going to be done? This PSQL APM.FNDB query. It is moving on to the FNDB query, which is available in PSQL APM.TS file. So this part also, sir, had explained it many times. With respect to the pool client, how to make a connectivity, this is the part which is so much important in order to make a connectivity at all. So here we need to do pool.connect. Then whatever it is going to come, take it as a query and it is query text as well as query param. Both it is going to be coming. So take those things and keep it as a result. And that you could able to reply back also. That is going to be set into the QR result. So this is what it is going to be written back to my model.ts uh, or else initialize.ts file. So this, I will be getting it over there. And this is what I'm going to return it back to my initialize controller. In my initialize controller, if the result is success, uh, once again, I need to go to get all details. If the result is success, display the table.rows and return result.rows. This is the part which is mandatorily you need to pass it. Because we are going to send a value back to my API. So it is coming back to the API. Now in API, what I'm going to do it, I'm going to do result.json result. I'm going to display it as a JSON. So that's why in this location, you could able to see the output as JSON. JSON is nothing but key value. Many exercises you had gone through with respect to the JSON also. So the same part, if I, in yesterday's practice session, already we had gone through with uh, insertion, uh, I hope so, get also, we have done. So let's see with respect to the deletion and updation. Before you, I will write down the query for updation also. Then you will be getting it clearly how it is happening. So look at here, now in index.ts, now the connectivity has been established properly. Now we are proceeding with respect to the deletion part. I'm oh, sorry, deletion or updation part. So insertion already I have done, uh, deletion also I have done. Now I'm going to write on the query with respect to the updation. Hope everyone are being clear with respect to the updation query. So here I'm going to give update all details. Now here, what are the things is needed for us? We need to make query text. Let query text equal to. At this location, we need to mention it clearly. So what I wanted to have it, 
update then table update table table name or update table name update table name all details set uh, let me set the row capacity okay row capacity equal to dollar 1 we are going to get it from the uh, parameter wise so row capacity then i am going with the column capacity so these are my attributes these are my attributes let me show you my attributes first of all as it is being connected with the server for 30 seconds if i have not used it it will be taking more time only <clears throat> okay see here i am having an attribute known as row capacity as well as the column and capacity so these two values I'm going to set it up. So row capacity as well as the column capacity, I'm going to get it from dollar two. Okay, where I'm going to give a condition where room or block block is equal to dollar three. Likewise, I'm going to give it. Now the next part once again I need to do for let. What is mean by dollar one, dollar two, dollar three? That I need to mention it over here. Query param. Query param is equal to at this location. I need to mention param dot. I need to mention what value I'm going to pass it in a postman. The same I need to mention it over here. So in body parameter, if I have mentioned whatever I'm going to pass it, the same I need to mention it over here also. So let us keep the same value as it is. So same variable row capacity, param dot row capacity, then param dot column capacity. This should be mapped it properly because dollar one is representing row capacity, dollar two is representing column capacity. Likewise, you need to mention it clearly. Otherwise, what happens if you are going to misplace it? Then block is nothing but var cap. You could able to see it over here. Block is block attribute with the data type known as var cap. And column capacity data type is integer and row capacity also integer. If you are going to misplace the things, then what happens? It will be showing the error only with respect to the data type. Then you need to mention dollar three is nothing but param dot block. Not only that, the value will be uh, it goes in an inconsistent way also. So in order to Remove such a kind of problems, always keep in your mind wherever the dollar one, dollar two, dollar three is being present at the same location, you need to give their respective variable also. Now, here we are going to return. Return avoid CSQL APM dot FN DB query. FNDP query here you could able to mention where it needs to proceed it needs to go to the update hall details only update hall details so at this location you could able to mention query text comma query param this is the thing you need to do it excuse me so this is what you need to do it in the initialize.ts file so once this part is over update hall details then you need to like what happens connectivity has been established and the query has been executed this value has to move on to the controller also so what you need to do you need to have a controller for it 
So you need to have a controller in the sense you as same as similarly the same way you could able to use it. So here at this place, you can have the same thing instead of insert, this should be update. Update hall details and you need to proceed further with respect to the update hall details only. And the remaining things are going to be the same. Whatever the query it is going to be there, you, you are going to check it out whether the result is success or not. If it is success, then you are going to return the result or throws values, right? So this is what you are going to send it back. See, the most important thing is for the insertion and all those things, you can able to... Uh, uh, send a message also instead of sending a result dot rows. Anyhow, you are going to update it successfully. Likewise, only you are going to get a message. So you can able to do it in such a way also. So here, the next important thing is like update all details. You need to have a close parenthesis. Okay. Then whatever it is there, whatever how, how many number of methods you are going to pass it. Obviously, you need to export that many number of um, methods also. So here you need to pass like update all details. You need to pass update all details also over here. So once this part is over with respect to the controller, uh, then initialize.ts file also you have completed. Then next we need to proceed to the API. So in API, we need to decide like what should be done. So let me go ahead with the post method itself. So what you we need to do it for that same thing. We need to do with the same thing as uh, similar to the insert only because we are going to get the parameter from the request.body only. Uh, then update. <laughs> update call details. This is what you're going to do it. So let me make uh, it an update. So now what happens? Update call details, update. So update hall details. So this is what you need to do it with respect to the updation also. Once these parts are over, then you can proceed further to the API also. Now see get method we have done and we have when we are clicking a send, we could able to retrieve the values from the backend. And total 42 rows were there, and that many rows has been displayed over here. At this place also, I have displayed it. And at the same time, you could able to see <coughs> in this place also, because of console.table, you could able to get the output at this place also, 41 rows. Now, the same thing, if I wanted to proceed with updation or insertion, then what I need to do over here, here I need to mention update. Update hall details. Like we had given a block only. So let me give a block over here. See, look at here. Row capacity and column capacity is null null for the block. For the block XCC. For the block XCC, row capacity and column capacity is null. So let us update this value as like 2, 3 or whatever it may be. So what we can able to do as a JSON, what you need to do it over here is here you need to pass all the values. Like let us keep like first of all block. Block means we need to give it with the double quote only. Block. Then colon. Then at this place, you need to mention the block name. The block name is XCC. XCC. Then comma, the second value we need to give. So what are the values we need to give? We need to give row capacity. The sequence is not a matter, but the variable matters a lot. So whatever the value variable you have kept it in the parameter, the same you need to mention it over here also. So two, then column and capacity, three. So likewise, I'm going to give it. and. If it is going to be uh, whatever I have mentioned in the router.post or get or put, the same I need to mention it at this place also. 
So if I'm going to click on it, I need to get the output as success true row count is one. So one data has been updated successfully. You could able to see that output at this place also. See, now uh, updation has been done successfully. Let us do uh, the same thing with respect to the postman. Uh, instead of update, let us have view all details and let's check whether it has been updated successfully in the table. We got the output as updated successfully. Here we need to make it as get and set. So uh, the last value where it is XCC, right? See, the value row capacity and the column capacity has been changed to two and three. So whether you guys understood up to this level, if it is understood clearly, Ma'am, as we have joined the class from today, may I know how many previous classes have been completed till now and may I know, can we get those recordings? Yes, you could able to uh, get those recorded session. Um, uh, like, uh, wait, let me share the link for you. Hope so I have broadcasted it. So you can move on to this link. Let me share it and show you how you can able to uh, watch the existing videos also. See, at the, you will be uh, going to this link. And at this link, you could able to see. Oh, my God. He, this is for the registration purpose. And... Uh, Okay, uh, where you can able to go is open mentor learn dot open mentor dot net recorded videos. This link, let me send it to you. Yes, I hope Rajesh had uh, Ganesh. Thank you. So this in this location, you could able to see all the recorded videos. And uh, once you are clicking uh, 36 videos over here, and you could able to get all the details at this place. So here you need to click on the respective place, like uh, wherever it is there, you just click on this particular place and you could able to get all the details at this place. Is it clear? Batmanaban. Oh, okay. Uh, so this is how you could able to view all the recorded videos. Uh, you guys understood like uh, whatever I had said till now. Is it clear for you guys? May I proceed further with respect to the uh, authentication service? Because back end, if it is being clear, then we can proceed further. Oh, okay. Yeah. One student had given a thumb. Uh, remaining, I don't know. Fine. Take it. Let me proceed. At least one student had given me a thumb. See, now we have done with the backup setup. Okay. Then proceeding further to the authentication service. So for authentication service, yesterday in, uh, in a class, sir had explained you how to create a services. So you could able to create a service by mentioning <coughs> as similar to as similar to ng v, then what you need to do here, we need to mention whether it is going to be service or component or module, whatever it is there. If it is module, then we need to mention ng, g, m, then module name. That will like module name, then routing, hyphen, hyphen, routing. We need to do it. If it is component, ng, g, then c, component name. Then if it is service, ng, g, then service, service name. Likewise, you can able to do it. So this is how you can able to do it for the service. Once the service is being created, then you will be having a file known as 
meaning of that is like I had kept uh, services, likewise I have kept. So, so because in order to keep it at the beginning of my uh, folders, I need to, that's why I had given an uh, underscore over here. So services, then inside the services, authentication service dot ts file has been created. I had kept the service file name as authentication service dot ts file. So in this, by default, you will be getting all those things. In yesterday's class, sir had explained about what is the usage of uh, RxJS also. So for getting the behavioral subject or for getting the last value from the output, all those things, you can able to go ahead with the last value from and all those things. But right now I have not used all those things. So I'm removing those things. Whichever it is needed, that alone, let me explain you. So these part uh, for further classes, we will be explaining you what is the usage of those things. But for presently, an initial setup to make it whatever it is required, that alone I will uh, go ahead right now. Okay. So now the most important part is once that is over, you will be getting the injectable, then you will be getting a router. The most important part in order to make a connectivity between your Angular as well as the Node.js is you need to have a HTTP client module. So this is the major part which you need to have. Meaning of that is where you need to import is you need to import in app module.ts file HTTP client module. HTTP client module. This is also I have not used at all. So HTTP client module, you need to import it. Then secondly, in your file also, in your authentication service also, you need to import HTTP client. HTTP module in app.ts file, HTTP client in authentication service. So why this HTTP client is going to be used? Because it is going to take it from my URL and it is moving ahead to the Node.js. So when it is coming to the Node.js, what happens? It will be going and checking out into the index.js file. It will be checking out my index.ts file, index.ts file. So in index.ts file, it is coming from my URL, local host. It is coming from local host. So local host is a trusted one or not that I need to give a input to the system. Yes, this is a trusted one. So that's why we need to use course, cross origin resource sharing. So for that purpose, you need to import course from course. Then you need to use this place, app.use course, or then it may be from um, Angular to the node or else from the node to the Angular. Whatever it may be, both the IP address, both the local host port number accept it. So we know that we are using 4200 for the Angular and 6644, we are using it for the we are using it for the Node.js, right? So for this purpose, we need to have these two parts. So once this part is over, then it is further proceeding to the, look at here, in authentication service. So you could able to see whatever the things I had used, HTTP client only. Router also I have not used at all, okay? <coughs> so what are the important things are needed? We need to have injectable, then HTTP client. So these two part are so much important for me. So once these two part are over, for viewing the hall details, simply what I can do, whatever I have did it in the Postman, in Postman for view hall details, I have used get, right? And here what I did, HTTP. Likewise, I have written the same thing. What Postman is going to do, Postman is going to say that this HTTP local host is the trusted one, permit them. Likewise, the postman is giving authentication. So that's why it is going ahead without the course origin itself. But when we are proceeding with our local host 4200 in URL, we need to give a browser instruction. This is a trusted one. So that's why we have imported a HTTP client. Then at this place, we need to do HTTP. Then it is going to be get. You need to know what is meant by this dot domain. This dot domain is nothing but see environment dot domain. I had created a folder known as environment. I had created a folder known as environment. In environment.ts file, I have mentioned it. Domain is nothing but HTTP local post 6644. In yesterday's class, sir had written it directly over there. The value has been written it over it over there itself. So you can able to do it in such a way, same way. 
but uh, in uh, many practice session i, I think so due to css i hope i had uh, explained you what is the usage of a environment uh, folder and how to bring the open mentor image also as a header tag so during that time itself i have explained about the production as well as customer logo so that's why i have written it over here domain domain and http just a variable to hold the value so this i have kept it over there so once this is over in authentication service, in this place, you could able to use it instead of HTTP, colon, local host, port number, instead of writing the entire value, you could able to write this dot domain. That's it. So once this part is over, it is moving ahead to the API. API means what? It is moving to the index.ts file. It is moving to the index.ts file. It is moving to index.ts file. See, it is moving to the index.ts file. In index.ts file, it is moving to the slash API. So it is coming back to the mount roots. So it is moving to the API.ts. In API.ts, it is going to check it out where the view all details is being present. And the same code is going to be utilized. I have not changed any code at all. The same code will be utilized it over there also. Is it clear for you guys? So this part, if it is being clear, then in Angular, how to write down, we can able to go ahead further. The time is going to be 11.45. Rajesh, uh, uh, five minutes more, then you can able to stop the recording. Yeah, ma'am. So what we can able to do it is, see, once this part is over, view all details, authentication service is over, okay? Then what you can able to do it is you can able to write the code in your um, Angular part. This is also authentication service also coming with respect to the Angular part only. Okay. So here what we are going to do it is uh, we had created a three uh, tabs, right? Uh, let me show you the screen. See. We have created a table details insertion and third. These three tabs we have created, right? These three tabs we have created. So now uh, this table details, I'm going to get it from the back end and uh, display it in a uh, Angular table. So this is what we are going to do it. So let us do uh, these things in a practice session. Uh, let me uh explain you how we can able to bring the value from the back end to the angular table so this is what we are going to do it in the practice session so prior to that if you have any sort of doubts or you need any sort of clarification you can able to ask me radish we can stop the recording <laughs>